Hello there, this is Scary Sharp with Trabolta Software. In this short video, I want to give you some tips on logging with Loop. The first thing we're going to look at is process flow. You should log both the progress from one method to another, as well as significant stages through algorithms within a method. Don't worry about the size of the log data. You can safely log a lot of it. We will compress this data and we are multi-threaded, so you shouldn't face any issues in that regard. The next thing I want to talk about is logging caught exceptions. When you catch an exception, you are taking action based on an assumption of what that exception means, so it's good to log your assumptions at that point, as it may not be valid for every case. Exceptions are not always errors, but merely exceptional circumstances in the execution of your code, as in this case where a drive has become unmapped, resulting in a directory error, but the issue does not lie with any code in this application. Something to bear in mind is that log message is automatically attributed to the source code location where it was logged. In the case of unhandled exceptions, you will want to use either the log.record exception or log.report exception, since they will attribute the log message to where the unhandled exception was thrown, not where it was logged. Report exception, when used in a WinForms or WPF application, will display the error manager dialog. It also logs the exception. If the process isn't a UI process, then the behavior is same as calling record exception, which just logs it. If you want to make your own logging class or forward messages from another logging system, use the log.write method. The key thing you will need to do with this method is specify the skip frames count so you get messages correctly attributed to where the original code called the logging class, not to the logging class itself. Note that in release mode, simple methods and properties will be inlined, changing the number of stack frames, so you either need to account for that or prevent the methods from being inlined. I'd like to finish off with a couple of good tricks. We've spoken before about how important good category and caption names are. Loop will automatically parse a dot delimited category to filter messages by that category in Loop desktop or server. However, something else to bear in mind is that captions shouldn't have instance information inserted in them. This is why the API doesn't treat it as a format string, as it does with the description, because doing so will notably reduce the effectiveness of Loop server analyzing messages. Also, don't repeat things we gather automatically, like severity, time, class, and method, as this is redundant and will waste display real estate. Captions should ideally be a single line and not more than 120 characters in length, although there's no limit, that's just guidance. Descriptions, on the other hand, can be as long as you like. Another good tip is to define constants in your code, stating various categories for messages that should share categories. This will prevent you from making typo errors and having messages misfiltered. If you have a config object or a request object or something similar, you can override the toString method to create a nice output of the state of the object and then pass that to the log method so that it can be inserted. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.